Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Feel free to become members if you so desire. This video is about how ancient fossilized trackways prove Noah's flood to be true. You see, fossil footprints are a common thing when we look at the rock layers. However, there are major discrepancies in these tracks which can help us easily falsify evolution and help us prove the biblical flood occurred. Trackways consistently appear in rock layers below the remains and teeth and shells and skeletons of the animals that made them. If you think that the earth is billions of years old, then layers of rock are supposed to be representing millions of years of history. How is it possible then that so many footprints could appear millions of years before any physical evidence of the hard parts of the exact same creature that made them? If there are footprints, there has to be a creature. That's obvious. But where are their fossils? They're not there. How could millions of years pass with millions of creatures dying and none of them leaving a trace of their existence behind besides their footprints? Here is that solution. The global flood easily accounts for them finding trackways below body fossils because those creatures that made their trackways either fled to higher ground to survive or were lifted up and carried higher. Their bones and teeth and shells eventually being buried by the rising flood water. As a result, their body fossils would be found consistently higher than their trackways. And this is exactly what we see. We see the less mobile aquatic life buried by rising mud and sediments brought in by the tsunamis with larger and mobile creatures at the top, not because they evolved that way. And this pattern we see everywhere worldwide. It's a pattern found in trilobites, amphibians, and dinosaurs alike. Even according to the older paradigm, tracks are being found millions of years before body fossils and are just considered a curiosity. Modern day bear and horse tracks in 300 million year old basement rock have been discovered. How many years are we talking about on average for these things? 10 million years for trilobite tracks and trilobite fossils. 35 million years between amphibian tracks and amphibian fossils. 10 million years between dinosaur tracks and dinosaur fossils. 245 million years between horse tracks and the first horse fossils. And 270 million years between the first bear tracks and the first bear fossils. That is more than a curious pattern to ignore. Ask yourself, how is it possible that in all of these millions of years, thousands upon thousands of bones and teeth and shells didn't fossilize? After all, footprints in wet mud are much easier to get rid of than the hard parts themselves. And if you look at the fossil record as a whole, there are tons more bones and teeth and shells than there are footprints. This is strong supporting evidence for the global flood and nothing about it makes any evolutionary sense in their model. The pattern makes perfect sense from the perspective of a worldwide marine catastrophe. And it's a great example of how the data in the fossil record actually makes more sense when interpreted from the history recorded in Genesis. Here are more controversial tracks in slabs of a sandstone located at the Dinosaur Museum in Texas. There are layers of rock in the Grand Canyon area known as the Coconino Sandstone. Lots of amphibian tracks have been discovered over the years that are all visible tracks showing that the creature was climbing up a sand dune and the tracks showing them trying to move in one direction only. But the angle and the shape of these amphibian tracks was a bit curious. It appeared that the feet were pointed in one direction while the angle they were walking in a significantly different direction. It was as if they were being pushed or pulled in a different direction than they were actually wanting to go. These tracks had been used to argue that the Coconino sandstone was evidence of an enormous desert with lots of dunes and small amphibious climbing creatures. And as many scientists have observed, 
If you have a huge desert in the middle of the Grand Canyon, it certainly wouldn't have been subject to a global flood. Paleontologist Dr. Leonard Brandt did extensive laboratory research with living amphibians and reptiles to see what they did in different settings. He observed what kind of tracks they made in dry sand, then he observed the type of tracks they made in water while walking on wet sand. He even added current to the water to see what would happen if they were pushed in a direction opposed to the way that they were going. The results were fascinating. He reported that the experimental trackways which best matched those found in the Coconino sandstone were the ones made under water while struggling against a current. It is the best explanation for these curious trackways and it fits the biblical model to a T. Another piece of evidence, we have what was called a dinosaur stampede of fossil footprints in Australia, presumed to have been made on land. The tracks were recently reinterpreted to have been made in water, with many of the tracks being made by swimming dinosaurs. The report came out in the January 8th Journal of Vertebrae Paleontology, documenting a fossil site in Western Australia where many of the tracks are nothing more than scratch marks from what was obviously a dinosaur being buoyed up by the water, clawing at the dirt as it swam along. This is one of many tracks found there and around the world. But all dinosaur tracks have water somewhat involved. Every single one of the dinosaur track sites were made in what best can be described as tidal flats. Jenny McGuire and Deborah Mickelson of Colorado University at Boulder presented a paper at the 2005 GSA documenting what appeared to be a trail of dinosaur tracks from a dinosaur walking and getting buoyed up by the water, more and more losing contact with the seafloor. However, the drawing that they depicted is not the reality of what happened whatsoever. This is more evolutionist storytelling and blatant lies to your face. The fossil footprints are in the middle of a series of rock layers. According to Steno's statigraphic principles laid out in the 1600s and still adhered to today, it would be assumed that those layers were laid down horizontally. This wasn't some seashore. The principles of initial horizontality. Strata, either perpendicular to the horizon or inclined to the horizon were at one time parallel to the horizon, and nobody disagrees with this. Therefore, these tracks were not made by some dinosaur walking into the sea, but rather the dinosaur was on flat ground in what is called a tidal flat, and as the dinosaur was happily walking along, the water came in and buoyed up the dinosaur until it lost contact with the ground. This is powerful evidence that Noah's flood was true, not some dinosaur as they portray walking into the sea, especially in light of the fact that other dinosaur tracks were found in that area that were not swimming, meaning they outran the flood waters in that area, as where this one did not. Dr. Kurt Wise was studying fossils in Death Valley, one of the few places on Earth where the Cambrian deposits are visible. He was looking for trilobites in just one of the lower areas, and so he got down on his hands and knees to investigate, but he found only a handful of animal burrows or pipes. These are made by organisms that once burrowed into the ocean floor. He noticed that the trilobite trackways moved higher and higher through rock layers. However, he found more curious burrows, eventually by the thousands. Further up, instead of finding burrows, he found complete tracks of the critters scurrying across the sediment. At first, he found only a handful of these tracks, but he found much more the higher he went. Suddenly, out of nowhere, he came across a mass graveyard of billions of trilobite shells. It was incredible. Kurt explained that scientists have found the same sequence all over the world. Burrows in one layer, trackways in layers above, and then the actual body of the fossil in the layer above the two. It's a curious pattern that is puzzling to anyone who thinks that the Earth is very old. 
Kurt provides a simple explanation by saying, as layer upon layer of mud swept over the trilobites, they struggled to dig out of their new tomb. As they ran across layer, they had just covered them and made new tracks. But as each consecutive layer piled on top of them, they eventually collapsed in exhaustion and died by the billions. Kurt's research is an excellent example of how creation science can look at the data that has been reported and provided worldwide and give a better explanation than the rescuing devices that evolutionists give. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to hit that like button. It really does help. And subscribe if you enjoy the content and want to see more. And find more of us on our main channel on Team Standing for Truth. This is Matman. Until next time.